This week on Across the Arrowverse, it's an ode to Batman by a woman. We're watching episodes one to eight of Batwoman. Hi everybody and welcome to Across the Arrowverse. I'm Matthew Vose. And I'm Catherine Vose. So we have made it to Batwoman. This is the new show. I think this is the first time we're talking about a new, new, new show. Mm, for a very long time. Maybe. Did we even do... Presumably we talked about Legends when that started. I, see, I think we might have started on season two. Oh really? Yeah. Well, oh, that's true, because we didn't really... It's not like we've done this from the very start no. of all of them. Yes, no, you, you're probably right. Uh, I do keep saying we should go back and watch the beginning of our own No. <laughs> no. <laughs> not happening, love. <laughs> um, there was a lot of TV to watch. There, there's plenty the of thing. other things we can watch without more Arrow. So, so I just made a slightly flippant joke about this being an ode to Batman, but there is an aspect of it that... And, and we've seen this a little bit in Titans as well, and in a couple of other things, that this is more about the effect of Batman on the surrounding world than it is on about the characters we're actually following. Yeah, it's, it's almost like she's she's walking in his shoes mm-hmm. and is um, and is sort of writing to him about it. Yeah, it's it's a little bit kind of this is the third generation of Batman stories. You know, you yeah. had Batman for a long time, and it was always about. Him and his parents becoming blah, 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 blah. Then the Dark Knight almost finishes that. And then a bit before that and up to now, we've had uh, the the you know the Dark Knight stuff of him as a dark brooding vigilante and so on. Obviously very different from the 60s and, and the, the Bat universe being a very dark place. And mm. it ends with him fighting Superman and... And arr, stuff. And now we're getting into, and what if there isn't Superman and we go to other... What if there isn't Batman and we go to other people around them doing it? Yeah. There was a whole series where he di- he disappeared, died, or, you know, different aspects of it, in the comics. And there's a whole series called something like Fight for the Cowl. Okay. Or something along those lines, which is about and different people take it on. You know, Nightwing takes it on for mm. a bit and someone else does and, and people rise in his place. Yeah. And it feels like that that concept has made it to TV. Okay. Maybe. I must say that that links into one of the questions I had. Okay. Now, this is going to sound like a silly question, <laughs> but is Batwoman real? And by that, I don't mean real, real. I mean, <laughs> I mean, is Batwoman from the comics or has she just been created for the purpose of doing this TV show? If you believe she's real in your heart. <laughs> if you clap your hands. <laughs> yeah, every time. A bell rings, a Batwoman gets her wings. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, no, she is real. I think from what I've read, this se- this season, this series, is based on one of her core comics. That I don't think I've ever actually read a comic with Batwoman in. Right. I've definitely seen that there's an animated movie where a woman turns up mimicking Bat- Batwoman. And it is called something like Mystery of the Batwoman, something like that. Okay. No idea. Um... But she's using guns because she's not as good a fighter and all this. So right. it's a slightly different thing. I I think this is a slight... They're, they're taking Batwoman as has been in, in you know the last decade of comics, let's say. But then they're taking some slight changes with it as well. Yeah, which I appreciate. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You, you, can't say, you can't stay st- too close to your source material mm-hmm. if it's to the detriment of what you're trying to create with Absolutely. the new um, new vehicle. And that's always been the nice thing with the Arrowverse in, in, in total. Like, they have, you know, Gorilla Grods, and they have Cupid and Deathstroke and all these. Slade. Slade. <laughs> um, but they do slightly different things with them, and the relationships change, and sometimes it's a different person or a different background, mm. and, and, you know, what the MCU has done as well. Yeah. They haven't quite stuck to the story, so everyone enjoys it, but it's not so far removed that we get angry about it. yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, going back okay. two minutes to what we were talking about, what is amusing me mm. about this is like she's like, "Oh yes, I know what it's like to walk in your shoes, Bruce." <laughs> <laughs> but 
But like Batman, one of the whole things is how lonely he is and how very few people other than mm-hmm. Alfred, in fact, almost no one apart from Alfred and Robin, know hit the two sides of his life. Yeah. Like, there's probably about 10 people now that know <laughs> that Kate Kane is Batwoman. <laughs> She's the least secretive Bat person ever. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and part of that is probably coming from the fact there has been a Batman. And, you know, so for her to take on the Batman role, she has to obviously work with Luke Fox. And there's a few other things that link in there. Um, whereas the, the idea of Batman was it not even Alfred knew to begin with. Yeah. He, and he had been gone for a decade. Yeah. And then came back and just started doing it on his own and grew from there. So a slightly different story. But what I have appreciated in this is they've not gone we're going to tell the Batman story. There's no analogue to, or at least not yet, there's no analogue to Commissioner Gordon. And there's no analogue to a Robin, or you, know, you you can sort of see there will be eventually. Yeah. Luke Fox is obviously Lucius Fox. That's, you know, it's um, Lucius Fox's son, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But but you know, he's, he's serving the, the same, same role. Thing. He's the Cisco Felicity. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me come up with the super techie things. It, exactly. What was the guy's name in the early Supergirl? Oh yeah, the one whose dad was a villain. Yeah. Wit, we, win, win. Win. <laughs> win. <laughs> um, Wit, we, win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, all the shows have this character and it is a fairly vital character. The man yes. the man behind the monitor, all that sort yeah, of yeah, yeah. Right. Um, But there's other characters involved here that I like. They're slightly different and they Mm. they feel new. So I'm not entirely sure what's coming of them. Yeah. So, So, next point. Go on. So you said there's no Commissioner Gordon equivalent. Right. I I agree. But I think Kate's dad potentially might end up in that sort of role. Do you not think? Because he knows, well, in theory he knows now, although obviously we had the... The double mm. double slip with the weird blonde English girl. Like no no offense, but Alfred spoke posh, right? And she will have grown up in the in the US. <laughs> there is no way she would have come out with that Cockney accent. <laughs> That's a very American Cockney accent. Exactly. Um I I think just to elaborate on what, what I was thinking there, is there's no a person she's working with in the police force who Agree. shines the light and all this kind of thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, although, although you know, she they did shine the light for her from GCPD. So although was although that it. light seems to be on all the time. Does oh, that yeah. ever, light ever get turned off? Yeah. Uh, that's that's a thing of, you know, Commissioner Gordon just shone it occasionally to scare people. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it could eventually be, but I like that they've not started with... We're going to give you analogs. We're going to, we're going to let you yeah. settle. This is trying to do a different story. It's doing a different story mm. with, it's got what two white men in it, one of whom I think we're going to talk about. We we may or may not be supposed to like him, the husband. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then there's the father who is problematic. Uh, he, he, he's problematic, but he's a flawed character, mm. and he's he's interesting for that. But it, it has a nice ethnic rainbow going on. Yeah. You know, and and on in sexuality as well, mm. and. So it's yeah. not just a little bit what they did with Arrow and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. No, it's good. I would say, actually, the, the, the father and being a flawed mm-hmm. character, I, I agree, I really like that. Mm. I also think he's, sadly, dead now. Um, second wife was also a flawed character. Mm, and I thought that was interesting. Yeah, you know, absolutely. like, working out what the deal was with her throughout the whole thing. And I'm still not sure it fully got yeah. worked out. Yeah. I, I feel like there was a lot more... Um, there was a lot more indication that she was more villainous yep. than perhaps the last episode or two would portray her as. Possibly, possibly. But but definitely flawed almost in the way that Lena Luthor was flawed. Yes, and, and Oliver Queen's parents. Yeah. Mm. So uh, let, let's just run through the episodes we're watching. We've watched eight episodes. They are Pilot, The Rabbit Hole, Down, 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 Who Are You, Mine is a Long and Sad Tale, I'll Be Judge, I'll Be Jury, Tell Me the Truth, and A Mad Tea Party. Mm. Which I, I think they're both quotes and chapter titles. I don't think they've just gone for chapter titles. Yeah. Um, they're leaning on the Alice thing. They are leaning on the Alice <laughs> really, thing. Quite heavily. Which, which is funny coming from Star Trek Discovery that lent on the Alice thing. <laughs> 
with that was a whole thing with the Vulcan family. Oh, okay. And, yes, yes. And, and Amanda had read it to both Michael and Spock. And yeah. Uh, um, do you want to give an overall opinion? What's your sort of you know? Uh, so I have got two overall opinions. Okay. Written down in my notebook. Okay. One is thumbs up! Mm. Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! The other is it's got the darkness of Arrow, but I give a. <laughs> 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 okay, well, okay, let's dig into that then. Why? I I am, I am, care about the characters a bit more. Okay. I mean, obviously, I've always loved Felicity and Arrow. Right. But... Um, I mean, she didn't come in for six episodes. I know, anyway, right? So, yeah. but, but I think there is a little bit more of a freshness about the characters. Right. And I, I, and I don't know, I can't really articulate why it is, which is not helpful for a podcast, but there's, I think the main characters in it, in all of them... I feel that I want good for them. Right. Even Alice. I I actually, I, yeah. mean, I don't know if we can have mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. but I, I kind of want there to be some form of redemption, maybe maybe like the emancipation of Harley Quinn, yeah. but but some form of, some form of redemption for her. Mm. The, the thing that's making me enjoy this more than Arrow... Arrow was doing... Uh, an Arrow is a uh, an alt Batman. Yeah. You know, what if we did a slightly different thing without some of the Dark Past stuff? Fine. Um, Arrow was always about people at the top echelons of society and you know, the undertaking, let's deal with that and let's deal with mayoral races and let's deal with big supervillains and so on. This is doing some of that, but every time it happens, there's an undercurrent of people are being treated badly in this city. Mm. There is there is a a massive difference in social classes and you know everything we see in American society at the moment that is detrimental to some and other people who don't care about it and I feel like the show is not necessarily looking at it directly yet but has an undercurrent of it that will come to a thing of she fights for the little man yeah <laughs> kind of thing the underdog yeah. Yeah. And you know she's stopping crime and and things happening, but it is also working for people who have prejudice against them, people mm. who have societal issues and so on. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's that's what's working for me. That every so often it comes up and it's like, ah, oh, it's trying to have a message as well as do a Batman story with Batwoman. Yeah. Mm. Also, she's not perfect. No. Mm. Like like for me, what keeps ringing true is that whole thing of she expected Sophie to leave leave the school with her mm-hmm. and coming from a place of she knows she's set up in life whatever mm-hmm. and Sophie's not and like that that lack of yeah that lack of understanding of um yeah you know what the risk that she's expecting her her the love of her life to do mm. undertake for her yeah she she's becoming aware of her own privilege yeah and appears to be using it yeah. So, you know, the real estate thing, that's quite interesting. Mm. I would like to see that growing into a company and doing something. And, yeah. You know, there are interesting stories there. And again, this is another thing with some of the more modern takes on Batman is making it about what Bruce Wayne does rather than what Batman does. Yeah. And there are other ways of, you know, fighting uh, crime and inequality. Mm. Mm. Um. You made me think of the thing there. So, th- so one of the reasons why I was a little sceptical initially that I thought they were just going to do a Batman story, but but call it Batwoman, effectively, was it seemed to be doing exactly the same thing with her going off and getting training and yeah. you know, the Batman Begins stuff. And it felt really like they were basically doing the same thing, but we've not returned to that. No, I, I think we may at some point. Right. Because, you know, like because we kind of returned to it when Alfred's Cockney daughter, mm-hmm. or granddaughter, whatever it is, daughter. rocked up, daughter, um... But yeah, you know, there is this mystery five years where she got kicked out of army school mm. and went around the world to get training yeah. from different mentors. <laughs> I'm like, oh come on, this is going to be Arrow esque flashback well, exactly. city at some yeah. point. But but you're right, they have uh, they have resisted mm. so far. But I wonder if that's there in their back pocket for a store of maybe of yeah, yeah. flashbacks and guest characters, guest and... characters exactly. Mm. But I think that 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 helps us understand why she is as um, why she's got the kickiest kick in the way Abs- that she absolutely. has. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's what that's there for. You're right. Yeah. Um, so Alfred's daughter rocks up. Let's just jump into one of the stories. Alfred's yeah. daughter rocks up, and instantly I was like, "Oh, they're going to do the thing they did in Arrow." 
with having Oliver and and the Hood as he was then in the same place at the same time. Yeah, at, at which point uh, you had to tell me what you're talking about. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> but that's something I feel like they did two or three times, and then they even did it with like that's how they got rid of Roy because. I think Oliver had to kill people or something, yeah. and so Roy took the rap and ran away and something like that. I do. Yeah. I remember that in yeah. Arrow. Yeah, it, it's a thing they've done a lot, and I would rather they had taken a different decision. It, it, it's almost like watching all the Arrowverse shows has hurt the Arrowverse now. Yeah, mm. and, and I'm not entirely sure whether the ramifications of it has fully landed yet. Like, are we going to? Is that supposed to be? to stop Kate's dad from knowing that it's her? Or is it just to stop the wider crows from knowing that it's her, but her dad still knows that Kate Kane is Batwoman? I, I think the point was that Sophie knew. Yes, and, and still so they, does. And so, but I think they've duped Sophie. Oh, really? In, in, because she saw Kate and Batwoman in the same place at the same time. She now doesn't believe they're the same person. Oh, Really? I don't know. You see, that didn't come across to me. I was left a little bit confused okay. as to why all of the shenanigans, because I thought Sophie still knew, but but maybe I've not been paying I, enough I, attention. I think it is a little ambiguous, and perhaps yeah. they're leaving that so it, they can be, but I'm sure there was a line of, I've squared it with your dad. Right. Like, that I was wrong, or I had the wrong person Fair or something. Enough. So. Fair enough. Mm. Which yeah. feels like they covered that story very quickly. Yeah. Like and it was a little bit of filler. And, and actually... I'd rather we didn't have the secrets and lies. And mm, are they well, Batwoman? Are they not Batwoman? I'm yeah. like, yeah, we've been there. We've done that. But but at least the secrets and lies so far are mostly about the identity. Yes. And they are, you know, when we talk about Sophie and her husband, they are actually starting to get to a point where they're talking and they're mm. coming up with issues and so on. Yeah. So Sophie and her right. husband. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, he's not been in it much. No. But certainly when he was first being portrayed mm-hmm. and i don't know if we're supposed to see him through the eyes of batwoman okay. but basically he was being coded as someone we weren't supposed to like right that's how it came across to okay. me and then as time grew on and like the way he's and the way he's been talking to sophie he seems a much more level-headed and open and let's talk about this type mm. type person which is not which is not quite jarring with him the way he the way he was coded to me at the beginning as someone that was going to be a bit of a douche. Yeah. So so I'm I'm interested that you think he was someone we weren't supposed to like because I it came across as someone who was just a bit blind, a right? Bit clueless, something like that. Not necessarily that he was a bad guy, just that he was the next floppy haired nice guy that she saw and got with. Yeah, it's funny. So to me, I was seeing him, I'm like, you're going to turn out to be an idiot. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's like, and, and I don't know why I thought that, but there's just something about the the very, very okay. um, corporate mm-hmm. mould that they've painted him in that has left me the impression of, oh, I'm not going to lie. Ultimately, you're going to be awful. Right. Okay. Mm, interesting. Yeah, but but you're right. They have, as time has gone on, made it even more like, okay, she's kind of lying to this guy as well. We should have some sympathy for him. Yeah, I I, I think we should. Mm. I mean, and I I don't feel like the thing that we saw in, at the end with him saying, you know, I do want to have a proper long relationship and a family and so on. So you know, we need to have this conversation sooner rather than later if there's going to be a problem. I don't feel like that was done in such a way of it's me or her ultimatum sort of thing. This is him being very reasonable and being like, you know, you need to tell me yeah, if there's going to be a problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so it's, it's all very all very level-headed. I think the show is on his side. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. I, I, I think it's not necessarily on Sophie's side. I think it's doing her okay, like you say, in terms of she needs the military career and she needs to do mm. well in what she does. Um, but... I don't necessarily see Kate and Sophie ending up together. Well... I don't necessarily see that as a positive thing if they do. I, I feel like it's going to be... The, the nearest analogue I can have is Barry and Iris, who took several seasons to get to that point. The, the, season one, they were not going to get together. No, true. It just, it, it, for many different reasons, it did not work. Yeah. And actually, it's ended up in a place where it does work. Yep. So I'm sort of... That, that's my hope for it. I agree that right now it would not be a good thing, and I think they're doing some good writing mm. about their relationship. Um. 
and, and it's quite nice to come in. It's not she's hot and she's hot, so they need to be hot together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's there's a history here, and they're both a bit damaged and broken by it. Mm. Mm. I think that's one of the reasons I really um, am a, a rooting for the Kate Kane character, right? Because she's all tough and hard. Mm-hmm. But she's got so many sensitive emotional points mm. that, you know, you're just like, yeah, you're not actually tough and dead inside. You're just like yeah. po- positively bruised and battered inside. There was the bit with her saying, you know, don't tell anyone, but I'm po- possibly an optimist. Yeah. That's good. That would make it a slightly different character. And mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. So, mm-hmm. talking about Kate and optimism, mm-hmm. I also have optimism. Let's talk about Alice. Or okay. Beth, okay. or Beth, or Alice, Alice, mm-hmm. Beth, whichever one we're going for. Do you think she's redeemable? No, no, no. Up until killing the mother, the, mm. the stepmom. Up until that, maybe. But now I don't think so. I mean, it, it, they, the Bat Universe has the very lucky thing with it's got Arkham Asylum. Without that, if you're in a, you know, I know Arrow does as well, but the thing of. Um, we have these people who are so damaged we can't let them go but we can't put them in prison because they will just be as chaotic in prison as well yeah. what do you do with them? Arkham is a very easy thing to be like we'll send them off there and pump them full of drugs and strap them down Yes, something like that um, so I see that being her end in Arkham. But, I, but I think I, and this is why I think it was episode 8 that it happened You know, she did something that you now can't come back from yes and like she, she... I think my my feelings about whether she could be redeemed or not mm-hmm. have have ridden a wave. Yep, because if yep. you remember a few episodes back, there was that couple that lived in their old childhood home that they yeah. left tied to the table with their throat slit. Yeah. That is also not necessarily something that's redeemable from. It's just I allowed myself to believe that perhaps that wasn't her. Perhaps that was Absolutely. Mouse or her henchmen. And maybe, maybe she would be able to be redeemed yeah absolutely that's what i thought was coming was something of it wasn't actually her yes uh, uh, and you know they are walking a bit of a tightrope because she's also protected kate yeah and done stuff to help her and yeah so it's mm. but then there was that very sinister thing when she was talking with mouse and mouse said he didn't want to share mm-hmm. her he didn't want to share her and she said no 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 we're going to share kate mm. like what actually is her end goal mm. for kate it's because i don't think it's just protecting her I think she wants to somehow suck her into her world of crazy. We're all mad here, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, yeah. Rounding up the family, we have mm. Dougray Scott. <laughs> Worst American accent ever. It has improved. This is I, true. I will give him some credit, <laughs> but those first three, four episodes, you could hear he was a Scott trying to do a sort of deep Chicago type accent. Yes. And it was not working. No. It, 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 I, I, I felt sorry for him that he was trying really hard and it just wasn't coming off. But actually, by by those last couple of episodes, it's sort of settled down a little bit. Yeah, it's not jarring anymore. No. So, like, I, I did care. You know, I think Dougray Scott's a really good actor. He does that sort of slightly grizzled cynic mm. thing really well. And, yeah. and I think it suits the person in charge of a security company. Yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And and I, and I believe that he wouldn't have forgiven his wife. Mm. I, you know, it's yeah. Yeah. And and that you've just made me think that that will be an interesting consequence over and above him being framed for her murder that she's now dead. Yeah. You know, because he might have forgiven her eventually, but he's not got that chance now. Not got that chance now, and the last thing that happened was them falling out. So Yeah. Mm. Yes, there's going to be lots of um soul yeah. a- agonising if he stays alive through to the end of the season. Well, mm, who knows? Wouldn't it be interesting if Sophie or Sophie's husband, who we really must find it, Tyler? That is ringing a Maybe. bell. Um, if one of those took over the crows? Yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah. Mm. I'm I'm struggling a little bit in terms of authority to act of the difference between the crows and the police and Argus and how they all fit together. <laughs> right. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, I'm sorry, I don't feel that in the real world uh, an, an, uh, an outfit like the crows would be allowed to run riot in the way that they are doing. As I have understood it from what they've said in the show, there are areas of Gotham where the crows are 
the police. Like a private police force. Yeah, being paid for possibly by the city. Right. Or by the people who live in those areas because they're doing mm. the wealthy areas, maybe something like that. And then they're also hired out for events. They right. do all the big stuff as well. Yeah. That's that's sort of what I've gathered, which is why they've made comments about like in the Bowery and so on. Because I think that's, you know, one of the not so nice districts. Yeah. Potentially. So mm. that's where the police are. Because the Fair police enough. get to deal with the lower end stuff. Yeah. Kind of makes sense. But it's also, yeah, it's not been totally explained. Yeah, it's like, it's and it's like, force. and they suddenly were like, oh, and Argus lent us this. I'm like, yeah. sorry, Argus is a government organisation. Why are they lending the private police force stuff? Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm overthinking this. They're just using this. the name, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah they're like, hey, we're in the same world, Argus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> Although they've not mentioned Crisis. No, okay. At all. So, yeah, the rest of the Arrowverse, it's somewhere around episode four is where the last crossover happens, clearly, because right. that's the point where she is Batwoman. Um, and fine. But you're right, they've not, mentioned anything else there's no thing about that running guy in central city there's nothing about the green arrow and so on it's just yeah so so if you didn't know that this was you know it's not impossible that someone mm-hmm. could have watched this without knowing it was mm-hmm. part of a, a a bigger set of shows and then that scene with nash wells at the end yeah. pops up you'd have been like what is this a trailer for a different show yeah yeah basically <laughs> And and it will be interesting to watch the Batwoman episode of Crisis. Mm, I'm looking forward to I, it. I, I I will be amazed if it stands alone. It can't stand alone. It's a five parts five part series, effectively. No, it can't. It so, can't possibly stand alone. But it will be interesting to see what they do with it. But what I can imagine mm. is that you could probably carry on with the Batwoman series without watching it. Well, that's something else. And I think all the series, I'm going to be really interested to see what ramifications Crisis has. Yeah, because I think we can definitely see it for. Arrow, we know is going to be having consequence. Yep. We know it's going to happen for Flash. Yep. I'm pretty sure it's going to happen for Supergirl because I think part of the thing is reintegrating everything into the same universe. Yeah. And presumably it must have some impact for Legends because it's almost k- kicking off Legends season. <laughs> it is, but I, I feel like that might just be a standalone episode. Right. Because it's the first episode of the series. So Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll see. Anyway, uh, Batwoman, what other topics do you have? What other questions do you have? What happened to Mouse's father? Yes, yeah, that was interesting. I don't, I don't feel like it's been mentioned or said. Or no, anything. he's so just. Did they team up and take him out? Was he so psychotic? It turns out he is the Mad Hatter, or yeah, is one... he still around? I, I didn't recognise the name, so I don't know if he is a, an established villain in, yeah. in the DC canon. So yeah, because he just, you know, like he may have been the one that first started giving Mouse new faces. Mm. But he certainly doesn't need to be there for them to do that now. Mm-hmm. Alice can do that now. And Mouse is not that disfigured. No, but he's disfigured enough for TV and certainly for the CW. Right, fair enough. <laughs> I was just like, how, how? I'm like, really? It's not that bad. I don't see them portraying a sort of two face. You know, my face is sliding off. Sort no. of. No. Yeah. So. No, but yes. Mm. But I also, I, I think they need to give us a bit more about their childhood as well. Because I don't necessarily see, or, or some more explanation. You know, like yes, two very badly treated children. Mm-hmm. Now, two complete psychotic, psychotic, weird, crazy killers with hench people. With hench people. This is the other thing I've wrote, written down. <laughs> How do bonkers villains recruit so many stooges? There's a whole like, line. Like you, where you do, where do all these people come from to you just get a come and if you get fifty, you know. come and hang out in weird dodgy um, warehouses wearing stupid outfits and just get killed all the time? Do you think all the hench people have to be like per- personal service companies and? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, they, but they have to be in a union like an equity. Yeah. <laughs> There's been like an IR thirty five of yeah. You know... <laughs> But yeah, very, they can't very get odd. benefits from. <laughs> <laughs> very odd. Um, the other thing I've written, just one more, is Mary Hart. Yes, yes. Hang I on. like Mary a lot. Yeah, Mar- Mary's a stepsister, isn't she? Mary's a okay, stepsister fine. with her yeah. secret clinic. So when we talk about characters who seem a bit different from other characters, I mean we've had the health person in Caitlin Snow, but she's not that sort of chemist mm. physicist type yeah 
you know, Dom Diggle could sew people up, but that was about as far as he went. I don't feel like we've ever had anyone like this. No. And I really like it. And it, it grounds it because it's yeah. about injuries and wounds and head trauma. And I like that the character has a parallel story going on with she has a secret identity that she's having to do quick changes for and an outfit and so on. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's really interesting. Yeah, and, and like the fact is she's very successful in her mm. and running her secrets clinic. Yeah. And and I really liked the touch that she got a proper goodbye with her mum at the end. Yes, yeah. And her mum knew what she was doing and was proud of her. Mm. Very, very... Um, th- 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 this, this show, for all its um, punchy, punchy, dark arrow emotions, quite okay. hard. I nice. like it a lot. I, 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 that was the moment that I knew she was going to die. Yes. The point at which, oh, she's getting a goodbye. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like when people who were having a relationship with her was like, oh, Dead. oh dear, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. I, I'm, I'm almost about to say who it is that that makes me think of, but I'm not. Oh. It's a show that we've watched, but I, you know, people might. Mm. Yeah, I really like it. She's the one that I would want to talk, because I was thinking before we were going, like, who would we want to talk about? I'm not fussed talking about. Luke Fox, because I feel like his story is coming, but we've not had it yet. Agree. He's he's nice enough. Yep. But we don't know enough about him to care deeply for yeah. him yet. And Alice, I think there's more to come Agree. on. Agree. But Mary's the one who's had a lot of time, had a lot of uh, of you know sort of background and character stuff going on, and and a lot of the story. Yeah. To be fair, and I like her. I, like, I do. I like the actor. I like the the stuff they're being giving her to do. Mm. And and the, that she's. Um... She's quite focused on her family. She wants this relationship with Kate. She, you know, really, she'd have liked her mum and her stepdad to genuinely get back together. You know, she wants her family to be there and be a family. Mm. And and I like that. It ring. It's real. You know. It's, it's... So so the actor is Nicole Kang. Okay. Um. Yeah. One. I, I I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with that because mm. at some point she will find out and she will help deal with. There will be a medical crisis. And she has to help Kate. I'm amazed she hasn't found out yet. Well, they, they've gotten close to it. So she feels yeah. like the next person to be brought on the inside. Yes. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah. I, 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 I am, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the series. Good. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. I'm really, it's, gla- it's... I'm really glad we've watched it because we weren't necessarily going to watch it, were we? Well, it's, it's on a different channel over here. Um, it's come out much, much later than the others. So I think it will always be slightly difficult to watch Yeah. in context of everything else. But we will do what we can to do yes. so. Uh, mm. Yay. Good. So we we are now at Crisis. We can Yay. watch Crisis. So, so I think I'm going to stop this in a second and we'll do a slight intro to Crisis okay. as a separate recording. Um, but do you have any thoughts on what's coming in Batwoman? Good. That's, that's I, radio I, for, for people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think we've got more shenanigans with Alice, basically. Um, I think our favourite Mary is going to be in danger from Alice Okay. at, at some point. Um, I think Sophie and her husband may very well have be split up by the end of the series. Okay. Um, I think that Kate's dad may very well be dead by the end of the series. Right, okay. I'm wondering if Mary's going to go on a revenge trip. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do no harm except for Alice. You know, maybe, maybe. Alice good. <laughs> yeah, because she and Alice are never going to be comfortably within the family together. No, so... This mm. is, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there's some meaty stuff to come, I think. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Next time on Cross the Arrowverse, it'll be Crisis. Crisis! We made it. Yay! <laughs> Let's do it. So that wraps us up for another week. If you have thoughts, questions or comments, you can use the hashtag ATAV on Twitter. Or you can find us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram as Eloquent Gushing. If you want to help support us, please check out our Patreon page where you can get access to exclusive content across all our shows. Go to patreon.com slash eloquentgushing. And don't forget to visit the homepage, eloquentgushing.com, where you can find the other shows across the network and subscribe to our weekly newsletter with all the goings on. Thanks for listening and we'll see you across the Arrowverse. Across the Arrowverse is an eloquent gushing production. 
For more shows you'll love, please visit eloquentgushing.com.